Well, for more analysis on uh, U.S.-China relations, we are now joined by Gusta Sato, who is an expert on China. Gusta, thank you so much for joining us here on RT. As we can see, China is rapidly expanding overseas and uh, rapidly expanding its influence, I should say. Uh, some are not uh, welcoming this and see it as a threat, particularly in the United States. But others, on the contrary, think this might be a good chance for Washington to boost its alien economy. What's your take on the situation? Well, I think, thank you very much for this interview. I think uh, uh, China goes global, and uh, it is a phenomenon that we have to, 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 to address. The United States in the first uh, place, because they have a special relationship. Um, this uh, bilateral relationship is, is beneficial for, for the world and will always uh, witness cooperation and uh, rivalry. I think cooperation with China is uh, beneficial for the United States. Without, uh, without China, you would not have these big companies uh, growing and, and growing every year. We have these multinationals not only in the southeast uh, part of uh, China, but also in hinterland China. You have to see uh, the Fortune most important companies, many Americans in uh, Sichuan province, the most populated one. So I think it's, uh, it's beneficial. Now, the well, thing but is you know, let me just ask you one um, one more thing here. From the economic standpoint, yes, I mean, it's uh, there are obvious advantages of this cooperation. But China also happens to be the biggest holder of uh, the U.S. debt. So, does that give uh, Beijing leverage in negotiations with Washington? Yes, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. But on the other side, uh, China is also a developing country. Uh, so uh, uh, we see that China is uh, has a global reach. But it's a partial power. Uh, it is not a global power as the United States. Uh, soon we'll see how China surpasses uh, the size of uh, American economy in far four, or five, six years' time. And uh, by the year 2030, we'll double the size of the America's economy. Uh, but still, China will be a uh, developing country. So this we have to take it into account. And uh, China will reach the income per capita level of European countries still in decades to come. Well, some are saying that, in fact, some experts are forecasting that the Chinese economy will overtake that of the U.S. and uh, the EU by 2030, which is not that far away. So how realistic, in your view, is that estimate? Well, together, together, the size of the economy of the United States and the EU combined. And in the year 2050, we would add Japan as well. So uh, bigger than these three uh, uh, focal points of uh, the world uh, economy. Um, <clears throat> well, let's wait and see. So far, the tendency projects this, uh, this outcome in a few years' time. Um, Chinese um, strategists say that, um, Western uh, strategists and economists uh, forecast this development. So it is nothing out of science fiction. It's something very real. Lau, before we let you go, let me ask you a quick question, and if you could briefly answer that. The question of currency, of course. So there has been a lot of talk for the need of a new global reserve currency. Uh, could you th do you think the yuan could actually eventually replace the dollar? Yeah, but not now, not, not even in this decade. Uh, it's good that the yuan rises its uh, standing uh, among other currencies in the world. And actually, many countries are developing a trade with China using the yuan as well, the common currencies, Japan, Russia, Venezuela, and other countries in all continents. But uh, for China, it's not even good to replace the, the dollar so far. This should be a, a balanced transition of power. All right, Adasa Sato, an analyst specializing in China. Thanks so much for your views here Thank on you. RT. Very much appreciated. Thank you.